you will be lost forever. Yep. If you think you're going to go into rapture and you're bowing down and worshiping idol, you're not going. You're not going. And, you know, I, I've been, I've been, fo- Brother George, I've been following this for years and I don't hear people saying it anymore. No, nope, you won't. Well, the idols have changed too. It's not a golden calf. The idols yeah. can be a lot of things. Anything that things. comes between God Anything and God. that comes, exactly, exactly. This is the, uh, this is the actual account here. And Israel abode in Shittim, uh, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab, and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat, and they bowed down to their gods. Also, did you know that you just, just hit me here? You know, when we have communion, we take the symbol of the bread and the, you know, grape juice for the wine. Did you know in Catholicism they hold up that sun disc? Is what they, what it is. It actually came out of uh, Egypt and in Babylon. It actually is the disc of the sun. And they hold it up. Did you know that literally they proclaim that that is God? You'll see them parade around just like have you ever seen when uh, when they when they go and they parade around with the statue of Mary? All these well, you know, all these people are bowing down and they do that with this with this uh, with the Eucharist. The same thing. They bow down to this as a god. They have this doctrine of transubstantiation, which actually what it means is that. The, the, the bread literally becomes the body. the body of Christ. But that doesn't come from Christianity. How could that... They say, that's what happened at the Last Supper. How could that have happened at the Last Supper? Jesus hadn't died yet. That's right. So how could, he be, how could he be in that Eucharist? This, my friends, this is idolatry. Absolutely. I don't care what they, what they call it. Which pope is this? Uh, this was Pope John Paul. But this is idolatry. Now, if you tell them that, that they're worshiping idols, they say, no, we don't worship idols. We don't worship Mary. That's the mother of Jesus. We're just giving her adoration. You know what adoration is? Worship. Yeah, that's right. All this talk, they lie. They're continually lying about what they're doing, and the rest of the world is buying it. Oh, we don't we don't worship the the sun disc when he holds it up in the air, and yet if you're in the church and they do hold it up, everybody got to kneel. Oh yeah, they ring the bell and everybody kneels because you're worshiping that disc. Like they've got kneelers. Kneel. They have kneelers. Kneel, you they ring the bell. They say that's the time of change into the flesh. This is what idolatry is. Thou shalt not make any image, graven image of any likeness of anything in heaven, on the earth, or under the earth. You should not bow down and serve them. Now, is Mary on earth? No. Is Mary in hell? Not supposedly. Right. I think their Mary is. Yeah. Their, you got to understand, their Mary is not the mother of Jesus. That's their Mary is Babylon, the spirit of Babylon. Their Mary is some is like a, a female form of Lucifer. Their their Mary is not the Lord's mother. Does the crown on that statue indicate that they're worshiping the Queen of Heaven? She is, she, yes, that's exactly, and they have given her the title Queen of Heaven. Where do you think that came from? Babylon. But this is what idolatry is. Okay, here's the, here's the Pope after him. This is not the current Pope, but the one right before. But uh, yeah, but you see that disc he's got? Yeah. That's the sun disc. And later on, well, maybe we'll see, but uh, when they put it up, See, in Egypt, they had, they had the round sun disc, and they would actually eat their god. And then they would put the sun disc into a, uh, it looked like a moon. And they would slide that right into the moon, and that meant that the sun god 
was giving or was having intimate relationships with the moon goddess to produce that child, mother child cult. They have the same thing in Catholicism. When they take the when they take it out, they take it out of the moon. When they put it back, they put it into the moon. It, it, it's exactly the same. Of course, we can't see it here, but. And so Jesus warns this, this dispensation, this Pergamus dispensation, which, uh, which is a time that follows or begins with Constantine, and he merges all these, all these things. It's not that he merged everything, it's that everything began coming in there after him, after he opened the door. And Jesus says, so, ha- so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Is there something that Jesus hates? There we go. He hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, um, the leaders. Have you ever heard of the, the so-called church fathers, the writings of the church fathers? Well, according to these, these so-called church fathers... <clears throat> well, the, the name Nicolaitans actually comes from Nico to conquer and overthrow, and Laos is the people or the laity. The name Nicolaitans means to conquer and overthrow the laity, to rule over them. Irenaeus says that the, they were the disciples of Nicholas from Acts chapter 6, verse 5. He said that they had an unrestrained indulgence, indifference to indulgence, adultery and indifference to eating things sacrificed to idols. Does it sound like that's probably right there, right on key? Uh, Hippolytus said that the, they were disciples of Nicholas. I wonder if the guy's name was Saint Nicholas. Uh, departed from the faith, uh, the, the true faith and the doctrine. Ignatius says they were false disciples of Nicholas. And, but he, he takes up Nicholas' defense. He said, Nicholas himself was not the heretic, but some falsely claimed him as their apostle and teacher. We weren't there. We don't know what was going on. We only had the record of history. Whatever it was, it was a group of people that were trying to rule over the laity. In other words, they're trying to make themselves as important in kings over the people in the church. This was the creation of the clergy, and not the clergy like we think of it where you have a pastor in your church. I mean, you can look up the writings of Paul. A pastor in the church is right. That's a, that's, a, that's a rightful office. A teacher in the church, even a prophet in the church, that's a rightful office. But this, where you had the appointment of the, uh, the bishops and then the archbishops and then the cardinals and then the pope, this is, is completely foreign to Christianity. The name Pope, anybody know what the name Pope is? What it means? Pope. It comes from, the, comes from a, a very common word. What do you think? That brown stuff that comes out your hind end? Uh, no, that's not Pope. I think you had two, two, uh, two O's on that. <laughs> The name Pope actually comes from the word Papa. Oh. Papa. In other words, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> no, sorry about that. But <laughs> when he called, see, these, the, 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 the high bishops of these regions, they were all once called Papa. It's the same, it's basically the same word as remember when the, the scripture says that uh, the Holy Spirit will, uh, will have us pray Abba, Father, right. Abba, Father. Right. And you might have heard people preaching on that say the word Abba means Daddy yeah. or Papa. Well, that's where it came from. You know, Jesus said, call no man on earth. Your father? Why you shouldn't call a priest father? What's the pope? What, what, when we say pope, what do we say? Father? Holy father. Holy. But it's even worse, isn't it? Yeah. Holy 
father. In fact, there came a time after this where, uh, you see, in the beginning, they were all called, not, not in the very beginning, but when this corruption came, this priesthood began rising up like this. They were calling them all Papa, because the Pope's not in power yet. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, but it did come where this this uh, title pa- Pope was now, or Papa was not supposed to be used except for anybody except for the the, the Bishop of Rome. So when the Scripture says "call," this was something that even went before I came out of the Catholic Church. I knew, you know, every time I read that scripture, call no man on earth your father, I had a, like, you know, like a shock inside me or something. It just doesn't belong. You ever see Sesame Street? And they used, I mean, this goes back years ago, but they used to have these things, they said, they sang a song, they said, one of these things goes with the other, and the other ones didn't. And I really felt I was smart because I always knew which one it was, except for I didn't realize that, you know, all the rest of the people that I was competing against were like two years old. But I felt smart because I don't see the rest of these two-year-olds because I knew one of these things didn't go with the other. But I had that feeling. And the things we've been talking about, like the statue of Mary and bowing down and kissing and worship, the kissing of the Pope's toe, the kissing of the Pope's ring the crown upon Mary. You know one of these things doesn't go with the other. It doesn't belong in the church. But they don't care. And if you try to bring it to their attention, you'll get a lot of resistance. Say, well, we're not worshiping those idols. In fact, they won't even call them idols. And they have the audacity... That if you talk to a priest about it, they have the audacity to say, well, you know, God in the Old Testament, God had them form the ark and the cherubim on the ark. Uh-huh. What were those? Those were idols. No. Well, first of all, nobody was allowed to go in there except for the high priest once a year. Yeah. And this is not the same thing. God didn't tell them to make that. And we said la- we said in our message last week, when this corruption began coming in, they, they began saying that Christianity would now be the religion of the Roman Empire, and they went through in the temples to these false gods were now called Church of St. Joseph, Church of St. James, Church of this, Church of, Church of St. Mary, and all these gods and goddesses, statues were given different names so that the people could continue to worship them in the same way they've always worshipped them. And that's how we got into this predicament. But you can see that even in the scripture, God uses this word. He says, I hate the Nicolaitans. I hate this. He says he hates the doctrine of the Yeah, he, well, exactly. Yes, God doesn't hate your people. Your point is, we, we looked at that calf that they made as an idol, a false god idol. Yeah. Literally, they worship it. It's like they got it. And aren't all those other things, they're, they're really no different. There's no difference at all. No. Sure, but, but right, that, was, that was commanded of God to yeah. make, uh, just like the tabernacle, and right. very specific. These are man-made things. These are man-made things. Of course, the Pope claims to be the vicar of Christ. In other words, he sits in the place equal to Christ, Christ yeah. as Lord over this earth. I remember that from Catholic teaching. That is, that is Catholic doctrine. Christ. He, In fact, you can read some more of it, and it actually comes out and says, when he's sitting in that chair, he is God. You know, it kind of reminds me of a scripture that says that this uh, Antichrist will exalt himself over all that is worship, even consider himself to be God, and go in the play the temple of God and proclaim to be God. It sounds kind of like that. Oh, oh yeah. Clearly, the appointment of bishops is set up as a hierarchy to rule over the church as Constantine set it up was not initially set up like that by the apostles. 
People were not set up to rule and to reign like in an empire. In fact, what they did is they patterned the church after Rome. The church was, was in structure was becoming like the Roman Empire. It was done and these men were appointed to be under rulers of the people exactly what they later became or were regarded to be under Constantine's program and thereafter. The form of church government is not biblical and the apostles, if you look, the apostles did not rule over the church as monarchs. None of them. Or governors. And neither did the men that were appointed by them to be shepherds or pastors over their flock. This came in, this is a lie of the enemy. You might, well, you might, uh, 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 you've seen this statue before. Who is this? This is Constantine himself. Uh, Constantine, we said before, we're going to say it again. Constantine changed the church. No, everyone, 100% of the historians will tell you Constantine changed the church. He established Apostolic Canon 35 saying each province would have its own bishop. Oh, by the way, do you know what the canon, these canons are? Remember the scripture says we're not under the law. If you do not keep the church law, you could be branded as a heretic and you could be burned at the stake. They, so Jesus takes you out from the law and gives you grace and they put you under canon law, which they came up with. Uh, churches enjoyed relief from taxation. That's probably a good idea, but see how he, he's kind of, uh, he's making peace with the church. Bishops were handsomely rewarded with great wealth. The people of the emperor, empire were heavily taxed instead. Someone's got to pay for it. Yeah. Right? It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the, uh, current Obama administration. Give away this and give away this and give away this. Everything's free, but someone's got to pay for it. Right? Yes, Guess who? The bishops of Rome, the bishop of Rome was given authority by the emperor and not by the church. This is an important thing. See, because the bishop of Rome later on, not yet, but later on becomes Papa, Holy Father, over the whole Holy Roman Empire. Well, how did he get there? He got it right here. He got this authority. The church didn't say, the church didn't all come together and say, okay, we're all going to vote and see who should be our leader. Constantine pointed to him and said, you will be the leader. I think there was some, I think there was some uh, dialogue going on behind the scenes. Because this bishop of Rome must have been in league with Constantine. He was, he was being handsomely rewarded. Now he's put on top. And then Constantine began to rule over the church. He assumed himself as the head of the church. Who's the head of the church? Christ. Christ. The real, true head of the church is Christ. He's the head, we're the body. But Constantine, the Roman Empire emperor, becomes the head of the church. And who later on becomes the head? Papa. Papa becomes Papa the Pope. Here's the church hierarchy as set up by Constantine. There were, there were five, at the time, there were five major bishops. Now, these were the, the most important because of the area that they had under them. Um, the Bishop of Rome, the Bishop of Alexandria, which is in Egypt, by the way, okay? Uh, the Bishop of Antioch, the Bishop of Ilia, which was Jerusalem, and the Bishop of Constantinople. These were the five major bishops. So Constantine set them up and he called the Bishop of Rome the chief bishop and Pope Sylvester now began to sit at his right hand. That's Pope Sylvester. And here's another uh, bust of uh, Constantine. Um, 395 A.D. uh, uh, After the division of the empire, Antioch, Jerusalem, and Alexandria all acknowledged the leadership of Constantinople. Remember we talked about the division of the empire. Constantine... He he went to Turkey, 
And he made a new Rome. Because he had this idea, he said, there's no way I can rule over this whole empire by myself. So he went and he, he went to Istanbul and he renamed it, whatever it was called. I don't know if it was called Istanbul at the time. I think it maybe it was. But he renamed it to Constantinople. I don't know where he came up with that name. It would be like Pastor Ed, you know, going over and calling the church Ed Stanspanople or something like that. So anyway, um, so he divided the empire and he put the Bishop of Rome in authority. Basically, he said, you will have the same authority that I have in this empire because you'll go ahead and watch over the western side and I'll go ahead and watch over the eastern side. The first ecumenical council was in 325 AD. It was spearheaded by Constantine. I hate that word ecumenical because you know what ecumenical means to me. Ecumenical to me means let's all become Catholic. Uh, I'm not sure the de- somebody look up the definition what it means, but it, it basically is we all come back, we all come together as one. What is the Catholic Church trying to do now? Bring people back in. Exactly. So somebody got a cell phone you could look up the actual definition of ecumenical. But yes, you're right. That I mean that's that's what they've been trying to do ever since the people escaped from Europe and came over here and founded this country. Well, Catholic. You know, I just heard something too. They, they want to bring all the churches. Oh, they want every. Yeah, they want every. But um, I just heard this, which I was almost floored. Did you know that one in every four people in the United States of America that claim to be Christian is Catholic? Twenty-five percent of those who claim to be Christian in this country are actually Catholic. What, what do you got there? Oh, let me spell it for you and you can look it up. Um, E-C-U-M-E-N-I-C-A-L. E-C-U-M-E-N Ecumenical. I-C-A-L. Ecumenical. So Constantine, here's some more changes he brings into the church. He establishes first ecumenical council. In other words, they're all going to come to get all the lead, all these bishops. Remember, every region would have their own bishop. He demanded it. Someone's got to be in charge. And so then he had these councils where he expected all these guys to come together and he would sit at the head. Okay? He desired unity... In the Roman Empire, I'm sure ecumenicalism has to do with uh, unity, uh, desired unity in the Roman Empire and thus called the church's bishops together to settle the raging heresy of Iranianism. Um, Remember we talked about Iranianism last time. We said very similar what it is, is uh, like a Jehovah Witness doctrine. In other words, they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe he's the son of God. What was Hitler doing with that term? That, well, that was spelled different. That's A-R-Y-A-N, I think, Arian. And that was, um, that was a different... That, that Arianism was a theology. Arian, like you're speaking, that's actually a, a DNA. That's a genetics. There, he was trying to make a, what he considered a master race. Two different, two different things here. But the heresy of Iran, Iranianism, the reason was, if you ever talk to Jehovah's Witness, they don't believe in the Trinity, right? Okay, so, but Catholicism wants to push the Trinity, not so much because of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You gotta see how this develops. First it starts as Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but today, the Trinity, it's very clearly Father, Mother, and Son. In fact, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost symbol in the Bible was the dove, but Mary's symbol today is the dove. When you pray to the dove, when they have the dove in their church, it's not the Holy Ghost. It represents Mary, who is also called the Queen of Heaven. 
What they have created in the Trinity is the same Trinity that you had in Babylon the Great or in the Babylonian cult. Well, you, 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 you had a group of people, these Iranianisms, or the Iranians, and they got their name from the founder of this sect called, who was, whose name was Arian. Okay? But, um, uh, they didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They believed he was the Messiah, but they didn't believe he was anything more than human. And, and, uh, so they didn't, they, they did not believe in the Trinity. Well, these, and there was a, there was a big, there was a lot of people in the empire that believed this way. These people had to go. As far as Constantine was concerned, I can't have unity as long as I have these people who are opposing the church. Let me, uh, I'm going to give you a clue here. As things progress, and as the, as the Pope, you're going to see, and I'm not saying this because I'm a prophet. This is just, this is just what's happening. You're going to see the Pope calling more and more and more for unity. In fact, uh, the, I talked about a, a, a conference that they've had there. Yeah, I actually have several conferences, and I heard the speakers. The speakers are not Catholic, but the Catholic, the, or these non-Catholic ministers who are calling for unity for us all to come back to Rome, were saying that all of the major denomina- Christian denominations have already signed a league, uh, a, a, an agreement with the Pope. They've already signed it for unity's sake. And uh, and the only ones who haven't are the Bible-believing Christians won't sign it, and they're very upset with them. So you're going to see, you know, you ever heard of the PC police? Politically correct? They're going to start pressuring you to be, you, you, just like you can't, you know, today you can't say anything about homosexuality. No, no. Okay, you can't say any anything about. Uh, you really can't say anything about anybody's religion. No. You can't say that Christianity is the only way. They're going to they're going to make it so that you can't say anything against this unity, or you're going to be really looked down upon. You have people like. Uh, do you remember the? Uh, and the guy who uh, became so famous, he uh, he had that, uh, uh, what was that book called, uh, Purpose Driven Life? Remember that, Rick Warren? He, be, he's, he, he is one of the main advocates of this. And he's got a huge, one of these huge super churches. And uh, I mean, I heard, I, it's not like I heard somebody say this, I actually heard him. Okay? I mean, you can go on YouTube, you can see it yourself. So you just look up Rick Warren. You'll you'll see you'll see there. Um, so what happened here? Look at look at the slide here. So he not only developed the first ecumenical council, and then these continued. That's how they came up with all these thirty laws. Uh, one of the laws, just just for instance, before before this happened, you could have communion in your own home, Pastor. If you and your wife and your children, if you wanted to have communion, worship God. It was fine. If you wanted to have communion with a member of your church or, or uh, with a friend, that's fine. But after, after these laws went in, if you did, grounds to be killed. Grounds to be killed. If you, you know, today we have the, we have the, we have the liberty in this country to have a Bible study in our home. That's right, yeah. If you had a Bible study in your home after after these laws went into effect, you could be killed. You don't have you don't have Bible studies in your home. You don't talk, you don't evangelize outside the church because you're not a priest. You don't know what you're talking about. In fact, you don't have any right to read the scriptures anymore. That's why they that's why they translated them into Latin to try to get them away from you. And that's why, you know, when, uh, 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 what was his name? Uh, the first guy that translated it into English. Oh. Do you remember his name? Uh, one, of the, one of the great reformers. Wycliffe? Wycliffe, I think. I think Wycliffe. Um, he actually, if I'm thinking about the right guy, he actually uh, was killed because of it. But um, they persecuted him. I think it was Wycliffe. But anyway, 
they brought the Bible to the common man so the man could read it for himself. In fact, if, if Wycliffe is the right person, he actually, uh, the Pope came after him on it and he stood up against the Pope and he said, I will have the laity all throughout Europe knowing more about the Bible than you do. When I took the Catholic instruction and everything, they told me that the word Catholic meant universal. Catholic, the yeah. If you look it up in Webster's Dictionary, Catholic means universal. It's the universal church. In other words, universal just means, hey, it fits every, you know, it's one size fits all. 